This lesson deals with capacitance and its properties. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 5, starting on page 1. In the course so far, we've introduced seven circuit elements. These are a voltage source, a current source, resistance, and four controlled sources. In this chapter, we're going to introduce two more circuit elements, and this will complete the set. Our next element is called capacitance. The circuit symbol is shown here with a straight line and a curved line. The voltage across it we'll call V, and we'll show the current such that it's absorbing power. Now the relationship between voltage and current for this element is quite different than our previous circuit elements. For a capacitance, the current is related to the derivative of the voltage across it by a scalar. That scalar we're going to call capacitance. Now we've sketched voltage current plots in the past. Let's do this again. I'll put current on the y-axis, but now on the x-axis, if I put the derivative of voltage with respect to time, I'll get a straight line that passes through the origin with a slope of c. But what are the units on capacitance? Well, current has units of amps, volts, volts, and t seconds. So this would have to have units of amp seconds per volt to have a cancellation with the terms here and give me that amps equals amps. Yeah, this is kind of a mouthful to describe a capacitance. We call it by something simpler. It's called a farad or farads, named after Michael Faraday, or just simply the letter F. I can make some observations about this equation. If you had a V of T that was constant, in other words, DC voltage, then its derivative is equal to zero. So the current through a capacitance for a DC voltage is going to be equal to zero. And that's our definition of an open circuit. I can have voltage across an element, but the current through it is zero. Another observation. If I were to have a very quick change in voltage, in other words, the change in voltage per change in time was essentially instantaneous. That would mean that the derivative is infinite, and that would then multiply the capacitance and would require an infinite current. But that's not possible. So we say that the voltage across the capacitance cannot change instantaneously. Now we will see in some circuits that we can force the voltage across the capacitance to change quickly. But when we do that, we have to supply a lot of current. From our definition of a capacitance, I of T is equal to C times dV dt. Let's solve for V in terms of I. Let's integrate both sides of the equation dt and evaluate that from T0 to T1. The dt's cancel. C's will bring that out in front. I've got the integral of 1 dV, which is going to be the value of V at the upper limit minus the lower limit. Let's now solve for V of T1. Divide by 1 over C. That's this term. And bring this on the other side of the equation. The voltage across the capacitance is sometime T1 in the future is 1 over C, the integral from T0 to T1 of I of T dt, plus the value of the capacitor voltage at T0. We call this an initial condition. Sometimes you just want to have the symbol T here, so let's just do a change of variable. I'll put a T for T1. But when I do that, I shouldn't use the letter T here. It means something quite different in calculus. So I'll use a dummy variable like we did before. And I bring my initial condition over here. So again, V of T is equal to 1 over C, the integral from T0 to T, of I of X dx plus the voltage at time T equals T0. Earlier in the course, we said that power was the derivative of energy with respect to time. Let's solve for the energy absorbed by the capacitance. Let's integrate both sides of the equation, dt. Evaluate it from time t0 to t1, and then proceed to do the integration. But these dt's cancel. So again, I got the integral of 1 dw. This is going to be the energy at time t1 minus the energy at time t0. Let's solve for this. Bring this on the other side of the equation. I got the energy absorbed at time t equals t1 is the integral from t0 to t1 of the power absorbed by the capacitance, dt, plus the value at time t equals t0. So I had the power is voltage times current, so substitute that in, plus w of t0, which is the energy absorbed at t equals t0 by the capacitance. Let's again do a change of variable. Replace t1 by t. Likewise over here, replace that by t. And again, we'll use a dummy variable for the terms here. Just have i of x, v of x, and then dx. And then we have our energy absorbed at time t equals t0. From our definition of the capacitance, we have that i is equal to c dv dt, but we're using a dummy variable x, so it's going to be c times dv of x dx times the voltage v of x dx. The dx is cancel. Take the c out in front because it's a constant. Got the integral then of v of x dv of x plus the initial condition. The integral of x dx is 1 half x squared. In this case, x is v. We've got 1 half v squared of x evaluated from the upper limit minus the lower limit. We get the 1 half c times v squared of t, and then minus that also evaluated at t0, plus 
this initial condition, which is the energy absorbed at t equals t0. But what is this term? That is also the energy absorbed at t equals t0. These two cancel with each other. And I get the energy absorbed by a capacitance is 1 half Cv squared. Because C is positive, and V can be positive or negative, but when you square it, it's always positive. The energy absorbed by a capacitance is always positive. What about the power? Power is the derivative of our energy with respect to time. The derivative of this, again, C is not a function of time. So you have 1 half C, and then the derivative of the quantity, V squared dt. It's not the second derivative, it's just simply the derivative of a function squared. Think of like a sine wave. If you were to square it, you get a cosine wave of twice the frequency plus a scalar. This term can be positive or negative. The power absorbed by a capacitance can be either positive or negative. The ability to generate power, which is negative absorption, implies that a capacitance can store energy. If the energy absorbed is always positive, then the capacitance must store energy when it's absorbing power, and it must return this previously stored energy when it's generating power. A capacitance is kind of a storage tank. We can put energy in it, and we can take it back out again. A resistance dissipates its absorbed power in the form of heat. A capacitance simply stores its absorbed energy and eventually returns its stored energy. So ideally, it remains cool to the touch. When a capacitance is absorbing power, current is entering the plus terminal. When a capacitance is generating power, current is leaving the plus terminal. When one coulomb of charge passes through a capacitance absorbing power, it gives up its energy in the form of one coulomb of stored charge. When one coulomb of charge passes through a capacitance generating power, it takes its energy by depleting one coulomb of stored charge. This is my mathematical definition of a capacitance. Some of the physics is a little bit different, but because of the derivative relationship, we can draw these conclusions. Again, I want to make this point. You can only take out whatever you've stored. So whatever energy you've put in the capacitance, you can take back. But when you've depleted it, you can't get any more until you replenish it. This is the definition of capacitance and some of its properties.